Let's talk about a term I find really annoying. This term means the exact same thing across multiple languages for hundreds of years, and I think it's one of the most damaging things for the martial arts. That term being martial art. Now, the reason I find the term martial art so annoying is because of that art portion of it. I think when people hear the word art, they think of something that's subjective, something that doesn't have hard and fast rules, something that means whatever I want it to mean, as long as it means I'm right. And while that's true when we're talking about things like preference, as in I might prefer modern art to something like classical art, that doesn't mean you can't say certain things are right or wrong. Abstract art doesn't mean the random doodles your kid does on the kitchen table are the same thing as what Jackson Pollock does. There is a technique and a method to even the things that seem super weird and strange. Now you might have the way you prefer to do things. You might throw a punch a certain way, set up your kicks a certain way, go for only a certain amount of chokes. But by and large, there's only a handful of ways to do things. There's a couple of right ways and a lot of wrong ways. So even though you have the methods that you prefer, that doesn't mean that you're doing art. That just means you found a couple of correct ways that work for you. The term that I prefer instead of martial art is combat science or combat sciences. And just as a quick aside, yes, I understand that we're getting into the semantics of what we're doing here. And it's really more important that we get out there and train than we talk about what we're training. But you guys are watching a YouTube video, not training anyway. So you might as well listen to me. I prefer saying something like science because science has specific repeatable, validatable, I think that's a word, way to test things. And this is what's most important because if you're being honest in the way you're practicing your martial art or your combat science, then every single day you are engaging in rapid fire expression of the scientific method. The only point of the scientific method is to make sure you are not fooled into thinking that something is true that is not or thinking that something is not true that is. Now, we were all taught the scientific method in high school, but very few of us actually paid attention to it, so let me review what it is. The scientific method is a calculated, repeatable way to determine what is true and what is not true, and it involves multiple steps that we use every single day when we step into our gym. Step number one, define a question. Now, this is not the same thing as coming up with a hypothesis. I'm not drawing a conclusion or speculating at a conclusion. I'm simply asking a question. In this case, let's talk about something like a standing arm lock. Let's say I decide to ask myself or my teacher, do standing arm locks work in a fight? This is an open-ended question of which I'm willing to accept any answer. Step number two then is where I make a prediction. I predict that I will be able to pull it off successfully off of a punch. So now I'm making an actual hypothesis. I'm not just asking a question. I'm speculating as to what the answer to that question is. Step number three is where I gather data about my question. And this is where I think a lot of martial artists fail. Because often what happens is someone will say something like, I believe I can pull off a standing Kimura off of a straight jab. And then they will work tirelessly to gather data that supports that theory. They will have compliant students and partners who allow them to pull off their hypothesis in real time. There's no real struggle. There's no real chance of failing. Yes, they are doing it against a punch, but it's not really a punch. They're not really doing it in a live, spontaneous situation. And in the cases where someone does pull this off in something like sparring, it's usually in a situation where their partner is so much less skilled than they are that they can pretty much pull off whatever they want, whenever they want. So it's not really honest data. The way to collect data, honestly, when we're talking about martial arts, or again, combat science, is to test it against multiple levels of resistance. Firstly, can I even pull this move off against a compliant partner? Can I actively catch a slow coming jab and then turn it over into my standing arm lock? If I can do that, let's try it against resistance. Let's try it against my partner moving a little bit faster. Can I do it now in sparring? If I can do it, can I do it repeatedly? Now, this is gonna be something we talk about a little bit later, but what's important is not that you're able to do something once, it's that you're able to repeat it. And not only that you're able to repeat it, but that that guy repeat it, that guy, that guy, that guy, so on and so forth. It's not enough that only you can do something. Multiple people need to be able to pull it off. And this is why I get so annoyed when people say things like, martial arts really does depend on the individual. Because yes, that's true. But for us to extrapolate what we need to be practicing, we need to look at what the group is doing, not what the individual can pull off. Like I said, we're gonna come back to that later. Moving on to step number four. We posited our question, we made a prediction, and we've gathered data. Now, 
we need to analyze that data. Am I consistently and repeatedly and accurately pulling off what I wanted to pull off in my question? Am I going for those arm locks consistently against multiple opponents with different levels of resistance? If the answer is yes, then this is pointing to my prediction being true. If the answer is no, then obviously the prediction wasn't right. And that is actually step number five, drawing conclusions. Because now I've asked my question, I've made predictions about that question, I've run hundreds, thousands, dozens of experiments on that question. Then number four, I analyzed that data. I saw, did it actually reflect what I thought it was gonna reflect? And now I'm free to draw conclusions. Is this move that I'm practicing, is this method, this tactic, something that's actually viable, not just for me, but for multiple people in real high stress fighting? If the answer is yes, then congratulations, you are done. The most important piece of the scientific method is being willing to be wrong and being willing to adjust. Going back to our standing arm lock, Kimura, Americana, whichever you prefer. If your question was, can I catch a jab and pull off that movement? And the answer was no, that doesn't mean that specific move was useless. It just means the way you wanted to practice it wasn't something you could pull off in real time. And this is why I think the scientific method needs to be taught not only in high school, but also in martial arts gyms. Because if you honestly want to develop the most efficient, effective method of fighting, you need to constantly be running this experiment. One final note about the scientific method, and this is why I think it's most important for martial artists, is because your conclusion is not what's important here. You can have an idea and you can be right or you can be wrong about it, but what's most important is the method part of this. The way you test something needs to be consistent across striking, clinching, grappling, weapons, sparring, drills, whatever. If the method is repeatable, then the conclusion, right or wrong, really doesn't matter. As long as you're testing your movements in ways that multiple people can do, then the method will gather you towards an honest answer. But your answer doesn't need to be consistent with someone else's. This is where the individual matters in the combat sciences. Because just because I can't pull off a kick to the top of your head doesn't mean someone else can't. But the method of practice has to be consistent. All that being said, you guys, that was my rant about combat sciences, martial arts, and the scientific method. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and open up the description box down there at the bottom. There you'll find the link to the Combat Self-Defense store where you can find merch to support me. And you'll also find a link to Combat Corner, which provides some of the best training gear on the planet. All that being said, you guys, I wanna thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time.